Hey, yo, Peter. Oh, yo, Cheetah. What's up? What's up? Today is all about the most important people in this podcast. Ooh, sounds like you're talking about me. I'm not. And you. I knew you were going to say that, but I'm talking about (laughs) our dear listener. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Uh, music advice coming at you. Hey, yo, it just seems Peter. so simple. What's up? <laughs> I feel bad now. I feel so self-centered. I feel right into your trap. On you that did. Intro. I mean, I set you up. I teed it up and you, you knocked it down the fairway 320 yards. It was right, perfect. Right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, our dear listener is the most important aspect. Without the dear listeners, what would we be? We got nothing, honestly. <laughs> we just we got sitting here talking. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of not loving our dear listener. <laughs> You can apply that to anything. Yeah. 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 So we want to just send love and appreciation and peace and uh, prosperity and everything to all of our listeners around the globe. I'm always humbled and befuddled and amazed by the many corners of this globe that folks are listening to. It's all over the world. We have three speak pipes today, so three voicemails. If you want to leave us a speak pipe, you can go to youllhearit.com. You can leave us your question. You can also, Peter, hit the YouTube comments. That's a fun place. Because people have been hitting the YouTube comments. I don't know if you want to talk about any of those people. Well, I was just thinking, no, we're going to do that at the end because we've got some really fun ones and i got some funny surprises for you. So make sure you stick into the end because we're going to hit that at the end of this episode today. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Go to the comments if you don't want to leave a speak pipe, no problem. And and um, pretty much all of our episodes are going up on the U, on the YouTube. We'll link below to that. But just so you know, it's a separate channel. It's the You'll Hear It. There's yeah. been some confusion on that recently. It's not the Open Studio channel. It's our own You'll Hear It channel where all the good stuff is happening. It's a bespoke It's channel. a bespoke <laughs> channel made just for you, our dear You'll Hear It listener. Thank right. you for all the great questions. Our first question is from Jeff. That's right. Hey, guys. Jeff from Portland, Oregon here. I have a question about playing on a tune with a repetitive cadence. So something like a night in Tunisia or softly as in a morning sunrise, where you have uh, these stretches of this repetitive 5-1 thing going on. Um, And my question is, how do you keep things interesting on something like that? I've been finding that usually after about one chorus of playing on a tune like that, I kind of feel like I'm done and like that's all I have. So, yeah, how do you keep things interesting? I think uh, specifically my problem is I sort of tend to overemphasize the change every time it goes by to the point where it feels really predictable and almost on the cusp of getting, like, kind of annoying because you can almost predict, like, like if, if I played five choruses on one of these tunes... I think they'd all sound pretty much the same. Mm. So, yeah, how do you just get some variety into a repetitive thing like that? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a great question. Yeah. I think that the the first thing is, uh, not to be kept in obvious, but if you feel like you're playing one good chorus, but then you play five choruses and they're all the same. That's consider- four too many. <laughs> that's four too many. And there's no shame in that. Yeah. There's no shame in that. Like, yeah. that can be a matter of... You know, just the feel of the day and the the room and or the recording or whatever. Sometimes one course is all that's needed, or it could be just a developmental thing. You're not to the point where you can play more courses that, or you can, but you can't sustain the interest. Because if you're not sustaining the story to yourself, you probably aren't to the listener either. And that's okay. But we're going to get into probably some ideas here on how you can do that. But in the meantime, don't keep playing just because you have to fill in a slot. Yeah. You know, I think that this, like, even with really accomplished players that can, you know, certainly stretch out over multiple courses over these kinds of tunes and play something interesting. Sometimes there's this feeling of like, well, let's let's fill in the space just because it's there. And sometimes, depending on what was played before you played your solo, or yeah. just the feeling like of where you are within the overall set, there's a lot of different factors, some of which would point to one chorus sometimes. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. I remember Betty Carter was awesome at this. She would like, she kept things so free and open in a way, but there was also guardrails in terms of like the tunes had to make sense. Yeah. Like, and they could not be, she never wanted the same every night and she wanted everybody like on edge in the band in terms of like what needs to happen next. And so when you're young, it's kind of terrifying. But then as you start to realize, it's like, okay, I don't have to play a bunch of chords. And she wouldn't always do that. Sometimes she'd solo for a long time. Sometimes she would do like one chord. That's right. You know, and so I really learned a lot from that. It doesn't tell you exactly how to do it, but it also opens up the door, but it does open up the door to just doing that. I mean, it's a lot like life too, if you think about it. You know, if you are, Jeff, if you're feeling stale or stagnant, Change up what you're doing yeah. completely. Yeah. You know, if you are like, I'm just marking the five ones every single chorus, yeah. stop doing that. Yeah. You know, and stop doing it completely. Uh, there's a million ways you could do that. You could find, you know, if you're on ninth and you find a common tone and just like be a drummer for a chorus, mm. you know? Oh, wait, when you said be a drummer for, I thought you meant go smoke weed for a chorus before you came back. Oh, sorry. My bad. You know, figuring out just what rhythmically is happening. And the Were you notes, trying to look like a, like your facial I was. I was, like, I was thinking like a drummer. But it doesn't, <laughs> you know, if you're just like outlining the harmony and the changes, yeah. that's like one very small, not very important aspect of music. Yep. Right? There's melody, there's rhythm, there's form, there's tension and release, all of which doesn't have to involve a 5-1 cadence, even though technically on the page of the real book, it's a 5-1 cadence. All that stuff you can let go of, especially right. if you're feeling like it's stagnant and you need to break out of your shell. Break out of the shell. Do come, something stupid. You come know? on, tortoise. Get yeah, out of your shell. So I you think know how many stupid things I've tried just to try to break <laughs> out of a shell, but sometimes they work really like sometimes some great stuff happens. You know? I think it's also instructive whenever we have something that seems like um, sort of a, a a disability that's built into a tune, like in this case you know, five to one, like static kind of harmonic movement or repetitive harmonic movement where it's like, oh, I can't play something interesting. Try to turn that upside down and turn that, turn that negative to a positive. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't have to, like the harmony is super simple. Just taking care of it for me. So now I can delve into these other things like rhythm or, you yeah. know, you, you, the, the thing that stays constant is we want to tell a story. Yeah. But how you tell that story, yes, you don't have built-in like harmonic movement. Although on the night in Tunisia, you've got a lot at the bridge. So start thinking about like, what can I do maybe rhythmically or thematically yeah. in those A sections to set up when I go to the bridge where I can let the harmony kind of unfold to those different places and then go back to that static but really interesting place to develop in other ways. And you can actually practice um, not being static as well, Jeff. We do this sometimes at Open Studio Pro. So there's one main sort of color that we always use as a pianist, right? Chords in our left hand, Blue. single notes in our right. Oh. And we think, oh, that's the way everybody plays. It's actually, if you listen and transcribe a lot, that's not how everybody plays. No. So there are lots of other colors. So there's the single note in your right and chord in your left. That's one color. What about single notes in your left, chord in your right? Is that legal? It is legal, and it can break up the monotony of right. what you're doing. What about single notes in your left and right? Oh. That's definitely legal. A whole different color. Yeah. What about chords in your left as a melody? That's another color. What about chords two-handed? That's another color. Yeah. So here's a here's a game you can play. Switch the color with every phrase. Let's try it. One, two. One, two, three, four. Going between the hands. Keep going. A little mini casino, right? right? A little mini casino, but just anything to really. But also, did you notice, Jeff and Peter, too, doing all that, like breaking up the colors? Like, yeah. you know, it was kind of, you know, clinical because I was trying yeah. to do that. But a good but way to practice. A it. great way to practice. And then when I went to what we consider like the main color choice on the bridge, 
It felt so much yeah. better, like a yeah. relief, because it was like, oh, that's not what's been going on the whole time. Yeah, and a lot of these tunes have that built in. So, like in this case, the bridge or whatever. So I was saying, like you've got that harmonic interest, so use that to your advantage. Lean into that, knowing when it's coming. That's about understanding the form. Yeah, that's my problem, but that's for another episode right. with that other tune. Because that's very static C minor, that's fine. But when it gets to the bridge, you hate that bridge. What's well, not really? Yeah, I, I don't like it. Me no like you. So that makes it. That's more of a challenge to me, even though the harmony's moving a little bit. Yeah. But I think the other one other thing you can think about, like, and, and this made me think of it with the two handed stuff. Maybe give me a little accompaniment like that. I'll just show how you can really change things up and use that openness yeah. of that five one. One two three four. have to be two-handed and maybe going more like kind of straight bebop because you got that built into the bridge yeah. and then find right, those places right. that are built into the melody absolutely and the melody is always there for you, too. Exactly. You Find know? those weird places so that you can... Because you know that things are repetitive. There's a pattern. Yeah. Use that to your advantage because anything that breaks that pattern is going to be super dramatic, more so than if the harmony is constantly shifting. Hope that helps, Jeff. Great question. We've got yeah. another question here from... Boom! Jeff, one down, and, two Line them up and knock them down. Here's a question from John. Q's, you got the A's. We got the A's. Hey, guys. Hey. How can you tell if you're <laughs> that was live. a late beginner or intermediate player? Late I'm kind of stuck between both, and it stops me in my in what I should be practicing. So you could usually tell late beginners, they start to bloom in early <laughs> April, and intermediates won't bloom until early May. mid-May. Oh, the, mid-May. At so the earliest, that. yeah. Right. So Well, that's, that's actually, no, the, you're joking, but that's an important point, I think, with this. Don't think about, it's a continuum, right? Yeah. And there's ups and downs, there's peaks, valleys, there's like, in terms of our progression and there is no line between late but between beginner and intermediate you just kind of one day you wake up and you're like wow i'm an intermediate no no no. it's just you wake up one day and you're like oh i've been intermediate for a while now. yeah you know and i and it's so this is a lot of gray areas and we're not here to say we've always bristled at being at defining a beginner intermediate advance especially because there's different areas like there's ear training training sometimes people become very advanced in ear training because of either like a combination of sort of natural skill or, yeah. and they've done certain things that they didn't realize were developing that, but then technically they're very beginner. So that kind of keeps them thinking, oh, I'm not intermediate yet. But actually you're advanced in some areas. Like it's very rare that we're just going to, everything's going to move along. Well, all the faders are going to be pushed at the same and time. And I think you might be surprised, John, at how rudimentary a lot of very advanced, like world-class players, like what they practice is not always the hardest most advanced stuff. Right. Oftentimes it can be very, you know, rudimentary what they're practicing because it's important to get those fundamentals and keep them sharp. You we got to put the fun in fundamentals. Yeah. The I, mental. Would, I would not at all be hung up on, am I a late b beginner or early intermediate? And I, I'm not sure how that would stop any practicing because there's no well, way. I can tell you how it would stop it. How? This is, this is a trap that in different ways, there's many different ways to fall in this, and I've battled this to this day, and that is there's something about the gravity of not practicing, not working on your craft that just can pull you down. Like, we have to stay up in the air. You think it's like, kind of an excuse not to it's keep absolutely, going? It's absolutely. Yeah. It's just another excuse that we trick ourselves into. And don't feel bad or shameful because this literally happens. I don't know. I mean, maybe Herbie Hancock is just like, I'm always floating up in the air. He probably is. But, that, but the fact is, like, there's so many different potential reasons for us to stagnate or to feel like I can't move on because of this. And I think that in, like... Where you are in that, in not looking at your progress, your progression as a player, as a continuum, and looking at it as like a static, you know, these demarcation points that are that's artificial, and that's just kind of a construct to to keep you from just keeping on. You know, yeah, yeah. this is very much like just a thing of like, I mean, 
there's certain things that we can do that seem easier, but we can actually apply them to practicing music. And so that's why I think it's good to have like hobbies and other interests because it's not just about exploring those areas that you're interested in. And, and by its very nature, when we say hobby, and I know a lot of the listeners on here think like, oh, well, I'm a hobbyist play, piano player. You guys are pros, so that's different. It's actually no different. Like yeah. I'm playing the piano and messing around with this music, and I consider it messing around with it. I haven't mastered anything. To this day is because I have the spirit of a hobbyist. That's right. You know what I mean? I mean, like professionally, there's interactions, and that can come and go, and oh, I need to make money doing this. I don't. I'm doing something else. That's, all. you know, very much a separate sort of thing you start to get a perspective on that but in terms of like my drive to want to play and stuff is the same spirit as somebody that's a hobbyist so when i do something else that i'm not necessarily as skilled at and possibly not even as talented at or just haven't spent as much time at like say running you know and i'm planning to do this marathon in april so it's like this is something new for me but i take those lessons that i learned in pushing forwards with that and still come back and apply those to playing music so it's like when you're marathon training you're just trying to add one well the way i'm doing it a lot you know a lot of different programs but it's like add one mile a week to your long run. So it's not about like, okay, I have to go out and run a marathon tomorrow. It's like, no, how am I going to get there? How am I going to break that down? It's not, well, once I become an intermediate runner, then I can do this distance at this time. And then when I become an advanced runner, I do this. You can look back and do that somewhat, but it's really about putting one foot in front of the other. Now that works well for running because you literally need to do that. But when we apply that to practicing and playing music, like less time worrying about what your level is, more time with your hands at the piano, doing things that are productive, that are edifying, that are interesting, that are entertaining, um, and that are exploratory and are taking you out of your comfort zone as you're practicing. You can't just do all stuff that feels good you already know how to do. Yeah, You You can't just read books you already have read. You know what might really help John in this scenario? Yes. John, if you haven't already, or maybe just expand on this, go find yourself a community of peers mm. like go out and go to the jam sessions if you oh, don't already get my sermon because going. you once you're in oh here we go <laughs> i'm on youtube baby with my boy adam listen oh sorry i'm turning away for the gun <laughs> once you're once you're in a group of of people who are with you right like on your level or a little bit above your level or a little bit below this whole thing of i'm a beginner i'm an intermediate it kind of fades away you're just in this group you're just growing together yeah you're always sort of can't help it you're human you're comparing yourself to the greats you're comparing yourself to other people but if you're wondering where you are go find other people that are around where you are or just a little bit above and that'll help you to at least see oh, here's where I could be with what I have, right? Because I think that's what's, if you're just trying to get stuff from either YouTube or listening to records and you are a beginner, I could see where it's tough because there's like all this, seems like a canyon of knowledge and experience that you don't have. But if you find yourself a community like what we have at Open Studio Pro, uh, and I'm about to swoosh over here, okay. but uh, if you find yourself a community, whether that's Open Studio Pro, like what we offer here, or just in your local town, then that that canyon, you can at least see the pathway through it, right? right? You can at least see like, oh, that person is way better than me, but I could see how I could get there, and yeah. it's through this this other person that's between us. You know what I mean? Like, gives you that inspiration, yeah. the perspective, totally, the direction. What to do, what Tangible not to things, do. things, like little yeah. things to hold on to where you're seeing that that. Path. And it forces you, I think, into, uh, and not to say that, that uh, this is John. Yeah. John or any of our listeners have or don't have this. We all wrestle with it at different times. It forces you away from like envy or discouragement yeah. as long as you bring the right mindset. That's right. To. Just like if you're running at the park and you see other, like that community might be just seeing other people out there running. They might blaze past you. They might be crawling past you. It doesn't matter. You're part of the human endeavor yeah. of doing something. And and that's, this you is, know. This is why musicians move to New York, right? Exactly. Because when you move to New York and or any big city in, in whatever you're, you're close to where there's a big scene. Yeah. And there's like, there's people that are living there that are at the very top and then you have this entire tree below them, and you could find your way up the tree, you know, by seeing, oh, I can be there. Yeah. What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? And, and do. your, your version of Move to New York might be going to a jam session. Yeah, in your town. It might be going to Open Studio Pro. My way, whatever. Find the one that's accessible and comfortable. It's the same reason people find still find value in going to see a mo- movie at a movie theater, the, the human experience together. Yeah, you can watch it at home on your, 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 your screen, but there's something magical about doing it with others. 
Speaking of magic, <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> that was very magical. Hey, speaking of magic, yeah. I, I saw a magic show when I was uh, south of the border last week. That Did was you really? really? Inspired. Yeah, and it made me think of you because wow. what you're doing over at the Open Studio Pro program is tru- truly magical. It's sleight of hand, right? <laughs> Until you get in there and you see that that you're revealing all the tricks. That's the difference between you and a great magician. You're actually showing people the tricks of the trade. Well, that they know about. <laughs> There's a lot right. behind the curtain. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's right, right. And I do have my assistant that helps and gets cut in half, but yeah. Go that's ahead. right. But it's no, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. If you hadn't had to, to check it out, look, you hear us talking about Open Studio all the time. This is our sponsor here, of course. But uh, just to clarify things, you've got two main pathways, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And we don't tell everybody this, but we're going to tell our dear listeners. We've got the Open Studio membership, That's right. which as you like to, to kind of, um, um, you know, put a line in the sand with that. That is the non-live experience, per, per primarily, right? Yeah, that's all the information you could ever want from the greatest players in the world. That's right. Fred Hirsch, Chris McBride, great you, players, not just Jeffrey great players, Keezer, great teachers, great teachers, Myself, Jeffrey Keezer, uh, Adu Ribeiro, Diane Elo Reeves. Alves, Diane Reeves. I have a ton of courses on there yes. now, like nuts and bolts courses for you. Chris Parks has a new course coming out that's yes. going to be over there. That's yeah. all the information you could Another ever want. Another Parks is going to be there soon. And another Parks is coming Plays soon. piano. You might First name's got two A's in it, but we can't say A- who. Aaron Parks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's wonderful. And then we've got the Open Studio Pro program, which is kind of n- not only next level, but includes quite a bit of live uh, interactive Zoom classes with it's, yourself, yeah, with Chris right. Parks, Jeffrey Keezer, Ruben Rogers, yeah, Bob are, Deboo, myself there on are Wednesdays. two, sometimes three classes a day now on Open right. Studio Pro uh, we're we're actually expanding to a different and cl- completely different time zone. Yeah. So that we'll have morning and evening classes here in North America, and that helps with people in Asia and Europe as well. Yes. And so you could find classes with great players: Jeremy Siskin, myself, Chris Parks. You are over there. Jeffrey Keezer's over there. Yes. And we're we going to have even there. more uh, teachers coming on board as we grow that program. And it's live every single day, where you can again find what we were just talking about with John. Find a community. You can yep. see where you are within that community and and have goals and aspirations that aren't just like, okay, I'm starting from scratch and I guess I'll just listen to Herbie Hancock until I sound like him. <laughs> That's a steep hill to climb. It is. You know, so but it, but if you can kind of see that path, that gradual path forward with other players and what they're doing, and I think I can reach that level that that person's at by this time next year, by this time next month. Like you that, mean Herbie Hancock? No, not oh, okay. Hancock. Sorry, I got confused. There. But there, I want to sign up. <laughs> but you can see other players who are really good, and yes. you can see like and they'll tell you how they got there and what they're working on. It's really great. Yeah, no, it's, it's an exciting thing. And the reason we call it Open Studio Pro, um, and look, I have recommend- to be a pro? <laughs> no, it is not because this is for people that want to practice, approach, appreciate, consume, and live this music like a pro. That's right. Like with the kind of like serious level. It doesn't mean you have to dedicate your whole life to this. You might only have 20 minutes a day, but you want your time with this music to be the most productive. Yes, you could sit around on YouTube all day watching our brilliant videos, I would recommend. Uh, But this is a curated place for you to be able to progress in a way that up until this program, I, I'd say, has never been available. I mean, I mean, unless you are physically in a community of other like-minded players with the world's best teachers assembled, you know. So it's really revolutionary what we're doing here with Open Studio Pro. Um, but we invite you in at just the Open Studio level, and we, you know, we have a money-back guarantee, satisfaction guaranteed on both programs. So if you stick around for a month and you find it's not for you, no questions asked, you're refunded and you go on no long-term obligations. So you can go find out more and join up today at openstudiojazz.com slash Y-H-I. That's openstudiojazz.com slash Y-H-I. Why Y-H-I? That's confusing. Because you'll hear it. You'll hear it, Y-H-I. Well, speaking of Open Studio Pro, Peter, we have one more speak pipe from Open Studio Pro member Paul. And then we're going to get to some very fun YouTube comments. I got some surprises for you. Okay. Gentleman's agreement that I give them to oh, you. Oh, boy. Okay. Hi, Adam. Hi, Peter. This is uh, Paul, Massachusetts. What up, Paul? Um, OS Pro member. And I want to start interacting listener. with these. I had a question you about are. the tune that I was listening to. It's uh, Gretchen Parlato's album, In a Dream. The name of the tune is Weak. Um, Aaron Parks is killing it on roads, but I can't figure out what they're doing rhythmically. So okay. I don't know if you guys do this kind of thing anymore, analyze tunes, but if you could uh, just take a listen and maybe uh, chat about it a little bit. I'd Let's appreciate it. it. Thanks, guys. You guys rock. 
Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Paul is one of those people. I love Paul. Actually, I love Massachusetts. Over an Open Studio Pro that you could aspire to be. Paul's a good player. He's solid. Yeah. Paul. Uh, yeah, let's put I love up, Massachusetts. I have the video Excuse queued me. up. This is actually a live video, and this isn't Aaron Parks on piano. This is Taylor Eichsty, who is a pretty uh, solid replacement. Uh, Kendrick Scott on drums, Bernice Earl Travis on the bass. And is this that video on? Oh. Yeah. Let's see what's going on here. Always listen. Can I just say before we? So I, uh, we we already kind of know what this is. Listen to the 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 key to, and most drummers are really great about this. I always the first thing I listen to on a drum set. Yeah. I think our our response because it's all high pitched are to listen to cymbals and yeah. and snare drum and hi hat things like that. Listen to the kick drum if you want to know the form. Right. They are most great drummers are really marking what's going on with the kick. Right. Absolutely. Like listen to this. Two, three, four. One, two, three. That's where it's starting over. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Yeah, that's, that you can tell you that's where really the groove hear. starts over. Right. One, two. And then trust yourself where you tap your foot for the overall meter, right? So it's in six, four. Right. Good. Taylor Ike's piece. Is that a young Taylor Ike? Got, and it's it's understandable, Paul, because all of the hits are are on these sixteenth note. Like I mean, there's a lot on the beat, and yeah. then these sixteenth note displacements. So it's like kadoom, doom, kadoom, kadoom, right. like that that thing, which makes it kind of seem like it's in a weird time signature. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's just six four. Well, and it's it's super helpful that well, it's not just helpful. It's just the way that Kendrick Scott is. I love Kendrick Scott. I've, he's one of the most exciting drummers to play with had some really fun experiences just thinking back, hearing this. But the way that he delineates the time or the meter or whatever, that's six. And I guess it's, it's yeah, six, four. Um, he's resolving it almost every time. Yeah. I, I think actually every time. So that is something that is a little bit more of an entry point. I have the feeling as they go along, he's going to start not doing that. Yeah. But I think it's an intentional thing too because of the way the baseline yeah. is offset. It doesn't resolve itself right. always. So like that's kind of the push and the pull that gives it that sort of macro syncopation. But great rhythm sections will set things up. Like they'll set your expectations up like this is where it is. Right. And we're going to go way away from this by the end of this. You're right. Right. But we need to set this up in a way that's clear. Let's yeah. listen to just a little bit more. Yeah. It's a great tune. Ever. Coming in on at the top of it too. Yeah. Offbeats on the bass on the bass as well, you know, like 16th note. Oh, it's a great combination of like very specific flows. She's vocally floating. He's doing those kind of micro grooves great within technique. that. Look at that drum technique there. So controlled. Yeah. Oh, here we go. 
Taylor is such an exciting yeah. pianist. Really nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. Good stuff. Thanks, Paul, for the question. Yeah, great question, Paul. Okay. Speaking of questions, let's talk comments here. Let's talk I don't mean to push com- things along. I can sit talk- around listening to those guys I know. and gals all day because it's killing. Well, we're going to go out on that today. Okay. Yeah. So, But before we do, we invite you to the YouTube comments section at the You'll Hear It. Uh, there'll be one for this podcast. Let us know if you like this format. Let us know if you like oh, they Adam's love the form- They don't love Adam Tabini, but they love the format. Let us know what you think about our hats. I have a new hat. This was a gift. I'm, you know what? I'm undecided on this because to me that looks like a dunce cap. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> Maybe I'm not okay, but to me that looks overly frigid, it's, right? I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> it doesn't fit me. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> That's a big hat. Carhartt, Carhartt. <laughs> you know what? This is the problem. Think about who is Carhartt made for? Big guys. And it's, hipsters it's, too, apparently. It's made but for it used to be become, made for big Car- guys. Carhartt's all the rage. I've I, you know, it's been around forever. Man, Carhartt is big in Germany. When I was in Germany last mm-hmm. summer, you know, I spent a little time in the, yeah. the homeland. And uh, how about that? You know what? Nobody cares about this. Let's get to the comments here. Okay. So in the YouTube, I'm just going to start. I'm going to go through some here. I don't know if you can see these. But huge Elliot. Carhartt hat. Man, I didn't, until I saw it on camera, I didn't realize how big it was, man. How about that? Remember the guy on, um, <laughs> what was it? The, the Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah. are you allowed to say his name? Bill Cosby. the um, Fat Albert. Fat b- b- Al b- b- Bird. But yeah. the guy who was like this, but then he had holes. He had in holes it. in it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Seems like it would be warm. <laughs> right. Okay. Elliot says in a recent episode, Pete, this is a nice correction. Thank you. I love it when the listeners correct us because we are astute and accomplished uh, pianists and jazz musicians, composers, arrangers, many, many things. But we are not college graduates of the English language. We are not, we are barely high school graduates, both in our own ways. That's for another episode, right? I degree. <laughs> I digress and degree. So we do play fast and loose with the language, the English language, as well as other languages. To put apparently. it lightly. <laughs> so Elliot says, Pete, libre means free in the sense of freedom, but free in the sense of not playing is grat." Oh, this is, I was getting fast and loose with French here. Yeah. Not playing is g- gratu, daily French advice coming at you. Hey, That's why I highlighted see, that. See, this is what I'm saying. Daily music advice is the one, man. Yeah, exactly. So thank you, for, Elliot, for so that what, what are you referencing? Did you say libre? I think I said you have to be libre when you're playing. Uh, okay. That's, that's okay. a sense, you know, anyway. Yeah, for, for two guys who can barely speak English, we <laughs> shouldn't right. probably we should. be... Okay. And parlaying then, into parlaying into different languages. Oh, parlaying. Like rendezvous. Little appetizer into, to yeah. the next comment. Aperitif. 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 An amus bouche. Am, amus bouche. Amus bouche. Amus bouche. I always thought it'd be a piece of mousse. Okay. Danny says, Congratulations on 2.51 thousand subscribers, Peter and Adam. And at first I thought that was a dig that the channel hasn't gotten super big yet, but then I realized 251. Bam. There oh, you go. Danny. <laughs> Danny. Thank you, Danny. Jay Jackson says, you both provided me with so much great content to practice. Love the podcast and Open Studio. Thank you. Why did I put that? That's, that's just a strong one. That's just a flex. Right. Etienne Franck. Etienne. In all the years, Peter has never made me laugh so hard as he did when describing his idyllic fantasy. That was LOL. really funny. Yeah. I don't remember that, though. That sounds out of place. If it's- yeah, you were just like, picture this. <laughs> like, it was one what of your things. Though? I don't know. You were like. Was I we- running in a field no, I think of he- Steinways? It was something like that. You're in. <laughs> Yeah, you're in, in nature, nature, but you're, the nature wasn't interacting with you, but you were in nature. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was. I a, was in nature, but I wasn't interacting with it. Yeah, it was. It, a, it was an odd fantasy. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, I'm an odd guy. Yeah. Um, Sean says. Uh, okay, now we're getting to some area. There. Sean Weil. No, Sean Allingham says subscribed. Gentlemen's agreement. Oh. Let's talk about the gentleman's agreement because we had quite a few oh, comments. Yeah. Let's talk about you the push gentleman's back a agreement. Yeah. First of all, if you don't know about the gentleman's agreement, that's just because we're gentlemen. I'm not a fan of the gentleman's agreement. Well, I am a fan, and we're going to see from the comments many people. Are. This is an agreement we have, and this is for the ladies and the gentlemen, but we're gentlemen. So the agreement is that we will provide you with this amazing podcast oh, for free, for Libre. I think that's when I got into trouble with the uh, Libre. Okay, okay, okay. Gratu. For Gratu. 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 Um, and in exchange for that, you 
will subscribe to the YouTube channel. Even if you're checking us out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever, go to the YouTube channel right now. All you have to do is press one button, subscribe. That's the gentleman's agreement. No, Why I'm is not, it a gentleman's agreement? I'm not a gentleman, but I do agree with this philosophy. You should click the subscribe I don't think you button. understand what gentleman's agreement is. I really don't. I don't okay, think let me I do either. It. Let yeah. me explain. Let me, let, let me gentleman explain it to you. Yeah, gentleman explain. Yeah, okay. please. The reason it's a gentleman's agreement is because we can't go check on you. Like, we're giving the listeners this podcast. So like it's a gentleman's agreement in that we're not waiting for them to subscribe before we continue to give them these great podcasts. So it's a gentleman's agreement. Okay. You know? So like we're going to keep doing it whether you actually subscribe or not. It's kind of a sh way to shame people in this. It is a little bit of a shaming, <laughs> but I'm all for shaming for uh, subs on the YouTube channel. So go to sub on the YouTube channel. Also leave us a comment. These leave are fun. Yeah. Okay. So Alex Blumenthaler says, Peter is so in unhinged and I love it. Is that a backhanded compliment? I think we were talking about the hinge episode there. Oh, yeah. I was unhinged because I didn't know the concept or yeah, the term. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am unhinged though. Uh, 2151. Adam, okay, this is from Jonathan Holmes. Adam is so exas exasperated, exasperated by the gentleman's agreement, he bangs his head against the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Next minute, though, he's stirring the pot, making it go all longer. Well, I that do, tickle me to no end. <laughs> I do love to stir the pot slightly. Yeah. Uh, Alan Wheeler One of my says, favorites. thanks for the gentleman's agreement, gentlemen. That's, that's Alan. Guys, are, don't encourage this gentleman. behavior. <laughs> Do not encourage. Alan don't poke the gentleman. bear. Ad, Adam, <laughs> Alan is drinking a cognac, smoking a cigar like a true gentleman. Oh, I can tell. Oh, He's that kind of guy. Okay. And that's it. That's all I got for you. I love it. Yeah. Well, this was really fun. Thanks, everybody, for the great questions. Uh, if you want to leave us your own voicemail, your own speak pipe, go to youllhearit.com. Don't forget to go to openstudio slash YHI to check out Open Studio, both Open Studio memberships and Open Studio Pro, the live classes. Right. And that's it, man. Let's go out on a little uh, a little more Gretchen Parlato and uh, week live in New York City. You'll hear it. Steamboat Springs, Colorado, currently. I'm in Indianapolis. Hey, how's it going, guys? Andrew, hi. Because I feel inspired to play something else from your play. Okay, okay, that's great. <laughs> I think using the metronome is a great tool, but it's not the only tool. All of the answers are really in the music. What does it mean to live in a groove, be in a groove? Until next time, happy practicing.